even though the president of FIDE is from Russia and he was a member of of, uh, of Medvedev's cabinet uh, in the past, that you know, a lot of people have been trying to say that Russia has this undue influence or like Russia runs FIDE and they, they are involved, but you are seeing that it is not just a Russian organization at the end of the day. <music> India offers to host Chess Olympiad after Russia stripped of showpiece event. Scroll down. India has offered to host the Chess Olympiad after Russia was stripped of the event on Friday following its invasion of Ukraine. The team competition, which involves close to 200 countries, was supposed to take place in Moscow from July 26 to August 8. India has conveyed its readiness to host the event on the scheduled dates at a budget of $10 million. So you guys, and this is where I'm going to be, be, I am going to pog and I'm going to dance on everybody right now. Um... This is where I'm going to remind everyone that when people think that I'm just pulling stuff out of my ass and I'm just making stuff up uh, with, with all of this, I'm not. I, I literally say these figures or everything that I say is based on what I have heard um, from various sources. So when people think that I'm just making up numbers or, you know, I say this or that, uh, I'm not. The reality is that everything I say is based on what I've heard um, or what I just frankly know outright. So at the end of the day, this is the thing that I... Um, I have to say, like, people, I literally said $10 million yesterday, and everyone's like, oh, you're just, make, you're just making this up. You're just making up random numbers. You're trying to, like, go over the top, make drama, blah, 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 all this nonsense. Um, uh, the fact is that everything that I say is based on stuff that I know or stuff um, stuff that I've heard from other people. So, uh, yeah, I said $10 million, and everyone's like, oh, you're just making this up. It's, like, complete nonsense. And um, uh, the fact is I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to chess. So, uh, so, so they said budget of 10 million and they say, if it, if it goes through, this will be the first major international chess event to take place in a country since the 2013 world championship between Vishwanathan and Anand and Magnus Carlsen. According to FIDE, two more countries have confirmed their interest in hosting the event. All right. Soon after we heard that Russia was not hosting the Olympiad anymore, I got in touch with the FIDE president, Arkady Dvorkovich and host AICF secretary general, Bharat Singh Chauhan told ESPN, we have private sponsors and a few state governments who are keen to put in the money. We are ready for any dates that, that the FIDE wants us to host. It's a huge opportunity to bring major chess event to the country. All right. Held every two years, the Olympiad sees the fiercely individual sport of chess morph into a team event where countries compete for a national title. Each team comprises five players and India's best showing in an over-the-board Olympiad was a bronze in the 2014 edition. After the pandemic broke out, the first online Olympiad was held in 2020, and India jointly won it with Russia. In its second edition, India tied for third place with China. FIDE has come under some fire following the unfolding conflict scenario in Ukraine, given the organization's close links with Russian President Dvork, uh, with Russia. President Dvorkovich is a former Russian deputy prime minister, and Russian companies form an important part of FIDE's roster of sponsors. In his statement on Friday... Following an extraordinary meeting, the International Chess Federation said that its council had decided that the Olympiad, including the competition for players with disabilities, and the FIDE Congress will not take place in Russia. The move came after mounting pressure from players and commentators to not hold any chess events in Russia in the near future, following the military action in Ukraine. All right. And oh, there's also one more part here as well, which I'm going to read um, separately, which is, uh, one other one other article I see here, which says, I don't know what to expect anymore. Alone in his Kiev apartment, Indian chess I am faces uncertain future. Okay, so here we go. One more article. On Thursday morning, Anwesh Upad Upadhyaya woke up to the faint sound of explosions and the sight of people loading up their cars with belongings and driving away. The 30-year-old international master from India who serves as a resident doctor at City Hospital No. 8, apprenticing in gastroenterology, has been living in the Ukraine capital of Kiev since 2012. He never imagined such a crisis would unfold in his lifetime. I can't believe this is happening, Anwesh, 2017 National Rap Champion, told ESPN. My parents in Bhubaneswar are worried sick and my phone hasn't stopped ringing. My teachers from schools back in India who I never thought would remember me after all these years have been calling to check on me. I'm just sitting in my flat alone, tense and scared. Very tough. Um, I don't know when I can go back home to India. Russia launched military operations in Ukraine on Thursday morning, and the airspace has been closed for civilian flights. Anwesh was supposed to fly back to India in the first week of March. With over 15,000 Indians... Well, uh, with over 15,000 Indians are... 
uh, while 15,000 Indians are currently in Ukraine, the Indian embassy in Ukraine had earlier planned to arrange charter flights for evacuation. Now, however, all special flights stand grounded. The telltale signs of panic are all over the capital city. Even before the local supermarkets and grocery stores could open this morning, there were long queues outside, he said. I saw lots of people driving away with bags fleeing the city. The Indian embassy has asked us to stay put where we are right now, so I'm doing that. Wow. Last week, following the advisory of the embassy, Anwesh had stopped going to work and had packed himself a go-to bag with essentials, snacks, and a flashlight. To his mind, it was supposed to be just a drill. I never thought I would need, need it so soon or at all. I've been reading newspapers and watching the news all day, every day since last week. They kept saying things wouldn't come to such a pass. Now that it has happened, I don't know what to expect anymore. Jeez, insane. Anwesh moved to Ukraine to study medicine a decade ago on the suggestion of his coach GM Timoshenko. A base close to Europe, he believed, would also open up greater tournament opportunities. Exactly. Currently rated 23-52, Anwesh last played an over-the-board tournament two months ago in the west central Ukrainian city of Vinitsia. In the 10-player field where he was among the strongest, he finished first. Crazy. Um, crazy. Just insane. Anwesh, um... Anwesh witnessed conflict up close for the first time as a second-year student at the Bogomolets National Medical University in Kiev. In tw November 2013, students took to the Kiev Independence Square to, then to protest then-President Viktor Yanukovych's decision to not sign an agreement that would have integrated the country closer to the European Union. Early in 2014, the government began cracking down hard on demonstrators. There were cops beating up students and lots of violent clashes. It was very disturbing, he says. After that, life has been largely peaceful. When I usually called friends who live in the east border regions, they would talk of movement of troops. It turned into an almost everyday thing, but didn't blow up into anything bigger. Now suddenly we're in the midst of what possibly looks like a full-scale war. If I make it back to India, I don't think I'd come, want to come back here in a hurry. Not just the scars of living in fear, but also the economic toll of what's happening now could last for a while. Anwash has his go-to emergency supplies bag ready, but he isn't certain that it will last the haul. His coach, too, lives in Kiev, not too far away from his flat. It's a bit chilly here. I don't know how long the power, heating, gas, and phone networks are going to work. Once they go out, I'm not sure what to do next, said Anwesh. Whether it's at my place or I go over to my coaches, no one is safe anymore. We are all equally helpless. Oh, crazy. Tough stuff. Very tough. All right, you guys. Um, as you see, obviously, it's not a joke. This is very serious. And, um, I mean, it seems like it basically is war. We have a tweet here from Mr. Nigel Short from the great country of the United Kingdom. Many important decisions were made at the extraordinary FIDE Council meeting today, including the termination of all sponsorship agreements with Russian companies. Wow. Wowzers. Um, that is pretty, pretty serious. Uh, that's, that's no joke. No joke at all. That is, wow. I mean, I guess I, is this going to lead me to a lot? Oh, this is, there's the official, let me read the official, um, let me read the official uh, the official article here. Let's 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 read this. Uh, okay, we have this today on February 27, 2022, an extraordinary meeting of the FIDE Council was held on the current situation and the urgent measures to be taken after the military action launched by Russia and Ukraine. As stated by FIDE President Arkady Dvorkovich, the FIDE Council regards uh, regards its main mission in pres is preser main mission in preserving the unity of FIDE and respecting the basic human rights enshrined in the FIDE Charter. In this regard, the FIDE Council has adopted a number of important emergency decisions. FIDE Council approves the following statement condemning the military action. All right. FIDE, uh, FIDE expresses its grave concern about the military action started by Russia in Ukraine. FIDE stands united against wars as well as condemns any use of military means to resolve political conflicts. FIDE will take any necessary action to ensure the security of chess players and other members of the chess community. No official FIDE chess competitions and events will be held in Russia and Belarus. Following the call from IOC, the FIDE Council decides that no Russian and Belarusian national flag be displayed or anthem be played in all FIDE-related international chess events. Instead, the National Chess Federation's flag or the official symbol logo shall be used. A simplified procedure for performing under the FIDE flag would be followed where it is crucial for the player or any other chess official under the current geopolitical situation. All right. 
In order to safeguard FIDE from reputational, financial, and any other possible risks, FIDE terminates all existing sponsorship agreements with any Belarusian and Russian sanctioned and or state controlled companies and will not enter into new sponsorship agreements with any such companies. FIDE Council condemns any public statement from any member of the chess community which supports unjustified military action and brings the case of chess grandmaster, grandmaster Sergei Karyakin and Sergei Shipov to the ethics and Dis disciplinary commission wait let me let me let me reread this wait a sec wait a second so fide council condemns any public statement from any member of the chess community which supports unjustified military action and brings the case wait i don't understand what this what does this mean though because they say brings the case of chess grandmaster sergey and shipov to the ethics wait does it mean sergey and shipov are getting like a does this mean something wait does this mean something's happening to them I, it's worded a little bit funny so i mean probably the way it's worded i don't understand it does that does that mean that sergey and uh, sergey and sergey are both headed to the are, are both facing the ethics and disciplinary commission at fide uh probably just getting a slap on the wrist sure but yeah they're, they're going straight to the headmaster's office okay um okay wow wow i was not expecting that uh, let me mute the mute the moves for a second so we're, we're going to finish this um the FIDE Council reaffirms the FIDE Congress dates, welcomes the AICS bid to host the 44th Chess Olympiad, and suggests 10 days for other bids. The FIDE Council suggests that regardless, regardless of the organization of the Chess Olympiad 2022, FIDE will organize the annual FIDE Congress during the previously planned dates from 27th of uh, July 2022 till August 2nd, 2022, with the election date on August 1st, 2022. Preference is to combine the FIDE Congress with the Chess Olympiad 2022. However, consultations with the potential organizers of the Chess Olympiad 2022 will be carried out. An adjustment of the FIDE Congress dates is possible if it does not imply a notable delay of elections. FIDE Council confirms the continental elections shall be organized within their constitutional terms. FIDE Council confirms its commitment to the continuation of all the established development programs for national federations, zones, continents, and affiliated organizations. Um, surprisingly good and fair decision. Yeah, I actually, I, I agree with this. I, I agree with this. I'm very surprised to see this, this one paragraph in here. But yeah, yeah. Also, I want to say... Um, this also does say one other thing, which is that even though the president of FIDE is from Russia and he was a member of of, uh, of Medvedev's cabinet uh, in the past, that, you know, a lot of people have been trying to say that Russia has this undue influence or like Russia runs FIDE and they, they are involved, but you are seeing that it is not just a Russian organization at the end of the day. Um, it's a huge decision, huge decision. Um, so very, uh, very, very important to see that.